Good morning or good afternoon, whenever you are, and welcome to the Indosoft Solutions for Home Automation webinar. My name is Fabio Teresino, and I will provide a very brief overview about Indosoft Home Automation uh, market trends uh, and some key advantages of Indosoft Web Studio for this industry. And then uh, I will invite Mr. John Hasmussen as a co-host for this webinar and Mr. Hasmussen will share with us uh, his experiences uh, with home automation. He has used Indosoft Web Studio to automate his uh, own home uh, and he also has uh, a background in industrial automation. So it's quite interesting the concepts that he applied from Indosoft Web Studio for home automation and hopefully uh, you, you'll be able to get some interesting ideas from his experience uh, and also share your comments and, and questions with him. Uh, at the top portion of your monitor, you should see the webinar bar. And if you have questions during the webinar or after the presentations, feel free to write your questions on the chat box or even on the Q&A box. And uh, after both presentations, I will be reading your questions and both Mr. Hasmussen and myself will answer each one of them. Once again, thank you very much for attending this webinar. And uh, with no, uh, and having said that, let's get started. So uh, really quick overview about Indosoft. We're in business since 1997. Uh, and we provide an AGMI human machine interface and SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition software. But actually the interface is so easy to use and so open and generic that it can be successfully applied to any project where you need data acquisition and graphical representation. And uh, John will also mention some of those uh, features and some advantages of Indosoft. Uh, that made him decide to use our product to automate his home and also uh, uh, make the project feasible and successful. Indosoft headquarters are in Austin, Texas, where we have the main management and development team for the company. We have also offices in Latin America, Brazil, and Europe in, G in Germany for local sales and technical support as well as a huge network of system integrators and distributors all over the world. So talking briefly about some important trends we are seeing in the home and building automation market, since home automation, uh, as we see, is a subset of the building automation, it follows pretty much uh, the same trends or very similar trends. Uh, so according to the market stand markets research, uh, as you can see here, the uh, home and build automation and control market uh, is expected to grow exponentially on the upcoming years. Uh, so the, it's predicted that from last year to 2016, it's gone as much as double of uh, size investments in revenue. So it's obviously a hot market and a, a market where a lot of money will be uh, spent. And there are some trends and some reasons to justify this growth. Uh, first of all, uh, rising energy costs are uh, justifying each time more people to use uh, systems, meters, or, or devices that consume less energy. And uh, not only that, but also a demand for more control to make sure to also measure uh, how much energy is being spent and control it. Follow trains over time in different seasons, find out leaks or, or uh, problems in the systems uh, before they, they keep wasting energy and money for months or years to come. Uh, also increased security concerns and uh, especially with the cost of hardware like cameras and, and uh, wireless communication devices dropping down. Uh, Indosoft Web Studio is capable of connecting sensors and cameras as well. And you can use Indosoft not only to measure information or to control your home, 
but also to visualize in real time images from cameras that we install in different portions of your uh, house uh, for security reasons. Not only cameras, but also different kind of sensors uh, to make sure that, for instance, if there is, uh, if someone breaks in the house uh, or anything like that, Indosoft detects this and can even send a remote notification, a text message or an email uh, with the alert. A fully integration solution, so the bottom line is it has to be easy to use. So there, there are some different tools and solutions in the market today, but today within the software studio, you can read data from different controllers, you can uh, write information to different sensors. We support uh, myriads of different types of uh, networks and protocols, even wireless protocols like Zigbee, Wi-Fi, uh, Znet, uh, standard protocols like Modbus, uh, different controllers and, and PLCs support for tablets and mobile devices. You can visualize the information on your own computer or tablet or cell phone. You don't have to buy a proprietary hardware just to, to monitor your house. Uh, so the, the fact that you can have all the tools in a single, uh, all the features in a single tool uh, makes it easy and feasible for you to deploy and use a home auto automation solution developed within the software studio. And in a more in a larger scale, we have customers using the software studio on the cloud. So you could potentially uh, change your business model or create a, a parallel business model uh, using the software studio on the cloud, collecting data from different houses and making this information available on the cloud as a portal for end users to access their information from a web browser. So the, the Indosoft App Studio working uh, on the cloud can collect data from different remote sites, different homes, save this information, consolidate this information on a central database on the cloud, and then make this information available uh, to each user based on their own credentials, username and password, and make sure that using this built-in security system from Indosoft App Studio, uh, each user has access to the information only from their own house or houses. So all the tools are available. It's just a matter to create a custom application to a specific home or even more powerful templates that can be applied to many different homes with minor customizations and configurations during the runtime. From the technology point of view, there are some unique features and characteristics of Indosoft that uh, makes it ideal for home automation applications. Uh, like I mentioned before, the fact that it's easy to use, everything is integrated in a single package. You don't have to install different tools, Visual Studio, you don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to write code, you just configure the software. The fact that it runs on any Microsoft OS from Windows CE, mobile devices, all the way to desktop and PCs. We support even Windows 8 today. Uh, so uh, as you've seen in this slide, any devices from Windows Mobile all the way up to Windows 8, Windows Server can run in the software studio, what we call the runtime that collects data from the sensors, from the controllers. Uh, in the thin clients, the, the device where you visualize the screens, the values, the alarms, uh, using the SMA solution can even be a non-Microsoft device like a, a iPhone, a Android phone, a Android uh, tablet, a iPad, uh, also Microsoft mobile devices, tablets and PCs, uh, but it's completely cross-platform. It's based on HTML5. The fact that we keep 100 compatibility with applications created in previous versions is also a must-have for this kind of application and our competitors do not offer the same flexibility. So since 1997 until today, applications created within the software studio can run with 100% of compatibility in newer versions designed uh, and released by Indosoft. So you do not have to redesign, he, uh, recreate your applications 
whenever we come up with a service pack or even a new version. The applications are fully compatible with new versions. Interfaces to any databases, we have even a patent uh, on this technology. And without being a programmer, without writing one single line of code, you can very easily save information to the databases and retrieve this information to uh, display your dashboards, uh, like bar charts, pie charts, Pareto graphs. You can see how the consumption of energy uh, changes over time. Compare different homes or buildings if you have more than one property. So create all those kind of dashboards but in a very, very easy interface. You don't have to write code to write a program to make it happen. You use a configuration interface. Support for many different protocols, protocols used in building automation, in home automation, uh, in, in sensors for home automation, and they are all available in the software studio. And uh, then you can deploy the application in many different ways. Uh, you could run the application in your regular PC from your house or even deploy the application in what we call a brick or blind device. There are some boxes there running Windows CE, Windows Embedded, and you can just install in the soft on that box. Uh, in the soft runs on that box, collecting data from the sensors, writing data to the PLCs, to the sensors, sending remote notifications by email, and if you want to visualize the information, you just open a browser from a remote device, even a tablet, and browse information from this box from your web browser. Uh, you could also deploy in the software studio on the cloud, collecting data from different houses, and use the cloud as the web server for your web thing clients. Uh, and then you can visualize the information on Internet Explorer, visualizing all the graphical screens or using any browser that supports HTML5. Uh, uh, like, for instance, I, uh, Android devices, Apple devices, Microsoft devices, even BlackBerry, using the Studio Mobile Access, which allows you to monitor tag values, real-time values. Uh, could be the state of lights, could be the temperature room, could be the set point for the, the thermostat even change set points like the, the temperature set point and allows you to visualize trends. You can see, for instance, how the consumption of energy or water uh, changes over time and monitor uh, alarms as well. You can see the list of alarms and acknowledge the alarms from any browser, from any mobile device. So with that, I'd like to uh, invite now Mr. Hasmussen uh, to join the, the presentation. I'll make him the presenter here. So uh, there we go. So John, feel free to share your desktop whenever you're ready. And uh, welcome and thank you very much for sharing uh, your experience with us. All right, to begin, I'd like to just share briefly my background. Maybe it will be helpful to understand um, the feasibility of uh, integrating your own home. I have, uh, my experience began as a programmer for water treatment uh, SCADA systems, uh, supervisory control and data acquisition systems uh, for water treatment plants here in the United States. <clears throat> I now do engineering for industrial uh, process equipment monitoring control and remote access. Uh, we use the Indusoft product extensively in the, uh, the HMI applications that we utilize for uh, the skid mount of water treatment equipment we manufacture. However, I'm not here to promote that company or service. I'm uh, simply uh, presenting this webinar as a hobbyist. Uh, I took the, the knowledge and experience that I had in uh, these areas to automate my own home. A brief history of the project. Uh, we constructed a home between 2005 and 2007. Um, about the most expensive time in history to build a home uh, it was the building boom. But nevertheless, we moved forward and, and did that. I desired to make the home a smart home and to increase its value, uh, among the other reasons or benefits of home automation. And the, the application is a work in progress. Um, you know, it's something that I do in my spare time after work. Um, and this webinar has been very helpful to further the work. 
Um, so I appreciate the opportunity and the given me to, to uh, share my experience. <clears throat> so uh, some homes are smarter than others. Uh, I pondered about uh, what constitutes a smart home and um, decided that it was a relationship between the number of automated devices in a home and the, on the x-axis there and on the y-axis uh, the, the level that those devices are integrated together and uh, the, the, the home becomes a smart home as that uh, the quantity of each of those increases. Uh, most homes include some automated devices. Uh, I'm sure that most of you participating in this webinar today have a thermostat for control of your heat and air conditioning. Uh, if you have uh, automated sprinklers, if you have a sprinkler clock uh, to automate uh, watering in your yard, uh, and many of you may have an alarm system that monitors your doors and windows, maybe you have motion sensors and glass and breakage sensors, etc., cetera, to uh, secure your home while you're away. And I'm sure uh, many of you have light timers. And these are all uh, automation devices that are typical in a home. Uh, but these devices are standalone, and they, they only represent part of the fully automated and integrated system. So uh, they're adequate, but they're, for some, um, uh, there's some delinquencies in these devices. They all configure and operate differently. Uh, I've, I've, I've been frustrated before by trying to uh, configure a sprinkler clock that I'm not familiar with or uh, configure a thermostat for a simple uh, temperature change or a, uh, a, you know, a schedule. And so, so they, they all configure differently. It's not an intuitive interface sometimes with some of those devices. And they have no central interface. They, they don't talk to each other. They don't communicate to each other. Uh, there, there's no central point in the home where you can go to, to change or modify the automated systems of your home. And the thing that they offer no remote access uh, inherently, typically. Uh, you can't browse from a hotel room while you're traveling to, to remember to shut off your system because it's raining or uh, to change your temperature set point or, or, or turn on a light for security, whatever. Uh, they don't offer that remote access. Uh, they do not enunciate events or alarms online, meaning that if there, if there is a situation here in your home, uh, you're usually unaware of it if you're away. Uh, they lack historical data recording ability. And there's some things that may be important for collecting historical data. It could be, for example, utility usage, uh, your, your gas, your electricity, and your water usage. Uh, they're not scalable. Uh, added functionality is not possible. You generally get the feature set that you purchase, and uh, they're not easily expandable. Uh, they're, they're not as robust as industrial devices, and they only represent just a part of automatable systems within a home. So uh, what are some of the automatable systems within a home? Well, certainly HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, the security alarm is an automatable system, video surveillance, uh, utility monitoring in this uh, day of where we're energy conscious and trying to live uh, green lives, uh, monitoring the electricity and water and gas for optimal uh, consumption is becoming increasingly important. Uh, lighting controls uh, for obvious reasons and sprinklers for obvious reasons. Um, window and door coverings. This is part of the energy conservation, certainly in the midday sun that may be beneficial to uh, pull a drape over a window automatically uh, based on the light level or something. And uh, I put down at the bottom there audio and video systems. Uh, I, I somewhat sarcastically put it on here because so much of the home automation industry seems to be focused on home theater and on audio and video systems. Whereas I think that uh, in a practical sense, these other systems are as important or more important than 
the automation of uh, the auto and video systems. If any of you have ever subscribed to a health automation magazine, they are almost entirely focused on uh, these home theaters with plush couches and, and sweet audio equipment and very little on the practical automation elements in the home. So I put it on there because it's part of the industry, but uh, it's not a priority for me. Uh, my decision to automate uh, came about because of the complexity of my zone radiant heat system. Uh, this system alone justified the use of the PLC and HMI for monitoring and control. Uh, why is that? Well, I have uh, zone heating, so I have seven temperature sensors throughout the home uh, to, to sense the temperature. These are 4 to 20 milliamp devices that, that wire into a PLC, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I have 12 zone valves. In a radiant system, you create loops of uh, water pipe and circulate warm air through that water pipe, pipe uh, in the floors to heat the structure. And I have 12 of these zone valves. And, and to accommodate those 12 valves, I have four circulation pumps. And that picture to the right it shows you uh, the four pumps and the <coughs> of the uh, zone valves. That you can see the tubing coming off of those. And then, uh, for those of you in Europe, you'll notice I have an instantaneous water heater. Uh, that's kind of new for us in the United States. Uh, the most of the old, what we have in the United States are tank water heaters, where we're heating heating the water all the time and uh, are, are fairly inefficient compared to an instantaneous water heater that would essentially provide unlimited hot water. So I used it to cut an instantaneous hot water heater on my radiant heat system, all of which interfaces uh, to the home automation system. Uh, so the system architecture in brief, um, represented by the, the red arrows here, uh, to begin on the left, I have the devices that are actually wired into the PLC. Uh, these are solenoid valves, uh, circulation pumps, current transformers. I monitor the, the power consumption within the home, and so I use a CT uh, to do that. And uh, also door magnets for the alarm system and temperature sensors. This is just a, a summary list of a few of the devices that are connected. Uh, those, those in turn uh, connected the PLC, they're hardwired to the PLC, and I selected a modicon momentum uh, PLC for use in this application for a number of reasons. The, the price point uh, was good, and uh, they, they're a long profile PLC. Uh, they, and they have on board an integrated terminal blocks, so they're very compact, uh, which is important in an in installation in a home. And the PLC supports uh, IEC. 6131, uh, which is a set of uh, six programming languages that are, are efficient to use uh, for automation. Uh, the, the devices uh, are, rep are represented either analog and discrete and or discrete out devices hardwired to the PLC. Uh, that PLC is in turn uh, connected to over Ethernet using the Modbus over Ethernet protocol, uh, MOTC. To uh, a Windows XP touchscreen and HMI um, that runs into soft in version 7.0. It's a shuttle touchscreen. It's wall mounted uh, up in uh, my front foyer, and uh, it's an aesthetically pleasing device. It's white and has a blue LED nightlight on it, so it looks good. Uh, it, you know, as people come over to the home, they are very curious to, to see that and what it does. And then uh, after the home was constructed, uh, we wanted to automate the lights, and so we, we utilized the, uh, the ASCII RS-232 serial connection or driver within uh, the NUSOC to talk to and read from Insteon lighting control products. This is a, this is a product line where uh, it's a line wave carrier, so it's a retrofit solution. It's a switch that you can install in a standard wall, and it communicates over the hot wire of the home. And uh, in, in turn, there, there's, a, there's a modem that can be used to plug into the, the PC running into soft and utilize the, the TXRX driver to communicate to those devices. So uh, a couple of 
photographs here. Uh, this is a structured wiring and control panels within the home. Uh, they, they say Honeywell on them, but not the, the box is Honeywell, but it's a custom designed uh, control panel uh, within the home. Uh, you can see a standard square D load center there too. I, I put those all together because it's made for shorter wire runs. Uh, up above, there's a UPS, uh, what I consider a critical part of any good uh, automation system is to have power backup and surge suppression. And then to the left of that, there's some broadband equipment. Uh, the control panel, here's a picture of the interior. Uh, right in the middle of the page is the Modicoff momentum. PLC, and uh, below that are some power supplies, some power distribution, and some relays for interfacing the, the I.O. within the home. Uh, up above that are other structured wiring solutions. So up to the right is a, a router, an Ethernet router. Up to the left, we have uh, cable TV and uh, there's a plain old telephone network, a POTS network for the telephone, as well as an intercom system. So I, I integrated all these systems into one control panel, uh, and it uh, works, works really well. Here, here's just a sample PLC program screen. Uh, the, the sprinkler sequencer, uh, the sequencer is a, a block of logic that allows things to happen in sequence, and uh, ideal for automating sprinkler systems. Uh, down below that is gradient heat logic. I, I just thought it would be helpful to kind of see where where the programming was. Uh, in the industrial world, all of the critical operational software occurs with the PLC uh, due, due to the occasional uh, unreliable nature of with those operating systems. It's critical to have a, a computer that runs uh, the automation system uh, kind of 24 7 without problem. <coughs> excuse me, without problem, and so we do that in the PLC, and then have a, an HMI interface for the PLC. Uh, here's an actual uh, photograph of crop for uh, the, the touch screen. As you can see, it's a shuttle computer, and I have the, just the main screen up there. Uh, while I'm on the screen, let me describe it. If you notice on the, on the Microsoft interface, there's a title bar that simply gives the date and the time and the current screen. And then down at the bottom, there is a menu bar uh, that, that navigates between the pages that are relevant for the home automation system. Uh, it, these are separate windows, by the way, so they, if, if there's a change that's required on the menu bar, <coughs> and it just has to be made in one location that propagates to all the other screens. Here's a zoom in of that same screen uh, using the standard Indusoft objects. Uh, I, I have on the left uh, the, the monitoring of the power and a little uh, historical graph there to show the power consumption within the house. Uh, just to make it more interesting, I, I did turn on a microwave and then a stove and so I could get some insulation in the, in the parameters there so it would be more interesting to look at. And, and this is a work in progress. This is not necessarily how the home screen, screen will continue to look, but I uh, just wanted to demonstrate what can be done on, on the automation system utilizing it. So uh, I have in the middle of the screen the four temperature, four, uh, four thermostats there to show the temperature of the basement and the main floor and uh, the bonus room. If you'll notice, the bonus room is about 51.5 degrees Fahrenheit, pretty cold. We don't use that room a lot. This is a, a classic example of how um, you, with your zone to heating and air conditioning, you can uh, isolate a room and not heat it or cool it to the point that you need. Um, it's for energy savings. So that's, that's why we have that set point down low of 50 degrees so we can save energy. And then we got kind of to the right. Uh, there's window and door security status. Uh, this is a, a really convenient thing, so I don't have to walk around the home at night. I can uh, monitor whether or not the doors are open or closed. Uh, uh, with, with children, if you have children, know that uh, windows and doors often are left open. And so this is a really nice way to see what's open and, and not. 
of the security line. <coughs> this is an actual footprint of the home, uh, the three levels, the lower floor and the and floor of the upper floor. <coughs> the, uh, you can see the green and red uh, automated windows and doors, uh, red meaning open, green meaning closed. Uh, and also a, a, a standard Indusat alarm enunciator there. Uh, and this, this is the, the screen that would produce an email or a text to my phone telling me that uh, one of these doors has been opened. The upper floor doesn't have any security currently because it sets about uh, 22 feet uh, above grade, so very difficult to break into. Uh, so let's move on down to the next screen here. Video surveillance. I have four cameras on the, in the home, and uh, the one I captured here for this presentation is the front porch. And this is this is utilizing the uh, capability of Indusoft to house an ActiveX control as an ActiveX container. So I'm using the standard uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, ActiveX control to simply browse a Cisco PVC2300 internet camera. This is a PLE camera, so it's powered over Ethernet, and a uh, really slick way to, to bring a camera into the, the home automation system. And these buttons to the right, of course, you switch between cameras. Uh, the heating and air conditioning, this is a more IO intensive screen. I also created a false scenario for demonstration today on the, the heating and air conditioning. Now, of course, I wouldn't be cooling the upper floor while I'm heating the main floor. But I, I thought you'd be interested in seeing the, the animation of the, of the areas of the home, the zones that are currently active. Uh, because of the size of the home, I have both radiant heating as well as uh, forced air heating. I just noticed there that I, I spelled the word radiant wrong. Forgive me for that. I'll have that fixed momentarily. But uh, really intuitive to use. Uh, even my family without training was able to use Indusoft uh, to adjust the temperature. If you'll notice there's a configure button under each of the temperature readouts. Uh, if that configure button is depressed, um, a pop-up screen appears that allows um, each of the zones to be placed on or off or in auto, meaning that they track the set point automatically just like the standard thermostat. And, um, there, there's uh, the current temperature readout as well as uh, an intuitive way to adjust the temperature up and down for uh, heat or cooling, whatever is applicable. So I want to go back to that screen. Um, so that's 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 pretty well the animation of the, the HVAC system. For the next screen, uh, the lighting. This is this is just barely under construction here. Uh, again, I mentioned I used the Insta on product line, the long wear carrier line. And uh, these devices, it's a robust uh, communication network that occurs and gets recording. Um, it communicates uh, using the ASCII uh, protocol. And it, it, up to the upper left, I, I simply put an on off button for the front porch light and also an up and down arrow to adjust the level because it's a dimmer. This is a screening construction. I've just begun to to automate the lighting in the house that gives you a good sample of, of what it might look like. Uh, the sprinkler system, natural system to automate. Again, this screen I uh, really focused on trying to make it intuitive so that it's an untrained person could come in here, select the days of the week uh, to water select the various start times. Uh, we have three start times on our sprinkler clock and uh, I'm turning the system on and off and also I have up to the other right there a sprinkler manual start in case you want to start the sprinklers manually. Again, this is a plat of the property, uh, my home in the middle and the, the blue represents active, actively watered sprinkler zones. Uh, the value here is the time remaining uh, for watering that particular zone. If you do uh, click on the configure button, it brings up a pop up where you can turn a particular zone off, on, or place it in auto. 
and it uh, shows you the time remaining, and then uh, again a intuitive way to adjust up or down the, the duration of which that zone waters. Next screen, I, I again have some fun with, with a blow dryer on some temperature sensors so that I can show you a more interesting, interesting uh, historical data trend. Uh, some of the values that I've chosen to, to have part of this trending, of course, the temperatures throughout the house, um, the power lags, uh, the things that I'll be adding here would be uh, gas consumption and uh, water consumption. Uh, it's nice to have a historical uh, data uh, for those, those parameters. And then uh, lastly, we have uh, an alarm and event screen. If this captures any event or alarm that, that, that needs to be captured, and again, it's one of the logs of historical data for analysis if it's beneficial. Uh, this is what I've used when I'm away from town to just see uh, who's been coming in and out and at what times, you know, for curiosity's sake. Um, so that's, that's uh, a, good, a good tool to have available for a home automation scenario. The time expansion that I have, I continue to flush out the lighting and timers. Um, scenes are, are, are fun thing to incorporate in home automation. Uh, so since essentially a click of one button, uh, certain automation events occur, uh, dimming of lights for a home theater, uh, the closing of drapes, uh, that sort of thing. It is nice to have, so that's a plant expansion. Uh, additional utility monitoring, I mentioned that I'll be measuring gas and water consumption within the house. Uh, remote access, uh, I was thinking about secure viewer, but, but Fabio introduced uh, the SMA, the Studio Mobile Access, which uh, is, is something that I'd like to incorporate in this application so that I can use my PDA to monitor and adjust the various parameters within the home. I'd like to incorporate the additional email and text notifications of uh, alarms and events uh, so that I can be informed of any uh, problem in the home on the way. And uh, I'd like to expand the, the audio and video interface uh, as part of the home automation system. So that's the future plans uh, for the home. Uh, Indusoft is definitely a viable product for home automation. Uh, a few of the things that I had thought of, uh, it's an established software company. Uh, when I compared it to the, the pricing of other industrial software solutions, by far the most affordable licensing, uh, it's, it's made a remote access capability in today's uh, world of transition to cloud computing and remote access. It, it's a natural piece of stuff used for that. Uh, it's easily programmed, uh, very intuitive. Uh, I don't think that uh, it requires a lot of programming experience to be uh, effective in programming in the sub. It supports ActiveX and .NET and now HTML5. Uh, so that's, that's excellent. And every time I've ever had a technical issue, uh, great technical support. And uh, so, so I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that the Indusoft is a perfect solution for home automation. Uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, Fabio, I guess I'll, I'll turn it back to you for some questions and answers, etc. Excellent. Thank you so much, so much, Joe. Uh, excellent. I uh, am really uh, thankful and pleased that you took the time to prepare the presentation and share your experiences uh, in your application with us. Uh, so with that, I'd like to open now for uh, questions and answers. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, any portion of the presentation, feel free to write them at the top portion of your monitor on the chat bar or in the Q&A bar. Uh, and John and myself will be happy to, to address them. So, uh, one question here is, any plans for a Mac-based solution? Uh, for the time being, uh, the runtime, the station where Indosoft Web Studio runs, collecting data from the devices, is Windows-based. However, the interface, the thin client where you visualize the information, uh, the, using the SMA solution runs on Mac, on Windows, on Android, on any device. Uh, even if you go to the Indusoft website today, 
uh, just to show uh, an example here let me see if I have the Chrome browser in my computer so I can show with a different browser di different from Internet Explorer so for instance if you come here to indosoft.com and scroll to web demo and select here the mobile access demo with the user guest and password Indosoft you can click here in view demo from a Mac uh, PC from a tablet from a cell phone from a, a Windows device from pretty much any device and then it's gonna con uh, connect you to the uh, Indosoft application running on the cloud and you can just type your username and password and you'll be able to access those type of screens to visualize trains, alarms, uh, gadgets, uh, different information from the Indosoft application running on the cloud and it includes as well uh, macOS PCs. Uh, we are moving our graphical interface to, uh, to be platform agnostic to run on any device, the complete graphical interface, uh, but the server, the runtime station remains uh, on Windows, at least for the time being. Uh, have you had plans to add uh, Caro protocol to standard drivers library in the soft? We are continuously uh, in uh, including drivers and increasing the, the list of drivers for in the software studio so if I open another tab here and go to windowsoft.com there you go under support in latest drivers we have a huge list of more than 240 protocols supported by Indosoft and we are continuously increasing this list. Uh, at this point, we do not have an open project for curl protocol, but if you have a real opportunity uh, that requires this interface, uh, please send a mail to me at, uh, at for Souza at indosoft.com or even requirements at indosoft.com and uh, we will consider the development of a new driver for this protocol and provide you with the conditions to do that, uh, time frame and so on. Uh, and in addition to that, Indosoft supports also the standard OPC interface, OPC DA, UA, XML. So if there is an external OPC server for this protocol, you can communicate with devices that support this protocol through an external OPC server because Indosoft provides the OPC client modules, uh, DA, .NET, UA, built-in in the product. And here, I, uh, th this is the thin client solution that's cross-platform. So it asks for a username and password. And if you type a valid username and password, you can click here to log on and it will connect you with the server where the application is running where the server application is running and it will show you online data from that server so right now we are rebooting the the cloud server uh, but eventually when it comes online then it will show you the the actual data from the server online data alarms and trains on any browser or on any tablet there you go so you can see anything from alarms process values, trained information, anything you want. So if I click here in alarms, it retrieves the list of alarms uh, from the cloud, from the server, and then displays this data, this information to you. Uh, and if you have a tablet or a cell phone with a different resolution, everything auto scales automatically to fit the resolution on your device. You can acknowledge alarms. When you acknowledge alarms, you can enter comments like this, confirm. So it's a bi-directional intuitive uh, interface that you can use to uh, monitor your system remotely using any device. Not only alarms, but trains, process variables, uh, all kind of interfaces. 
So here you can see a dashboard uh, with some widgets that display in real time online information from the cloud. So anything from digital values to analog values uh, are readily available there. As you see here, there are quite a few. And once again, if you flip your device, if you change the orientation, no matter what resolution you have, the screen is readjusted to show the information uh, in the correct format to you. And uh, even if you want to change a value, like for instance, if it was a, a set point, you could click here, change the value using the touchscreen interface or the mouse, and write the value back to the server. So it's a very intuitive, easy to, to create interface that runs on pretty much any browser. So additional questions here. Does Indosoft work on Windows Phone? The SMA Think Client works on Windows Phone, the old Windows uh, Mobile, the new Windows 7, Windows, uh, Windows 8 Phone, uh, as well as non-Microsoft devices like uh, iOS and Android. So the answer is for the SMA Think Client, for the graphical interface with the user, yes, it does work with the Windows Phone. The, the server, the runtime has to run on a regular Windows or Windows Embedded or Windows CE device. Uh, does Indosoft has uh, any chosen compatible home automation device vendor? Uh, I believe the question is about the controller and we don't have uh, one single preferable uh, device. We have many partners. Uh, if you go to the Indosoft website under partners here, we have, for instance, certified hardware and distributors and channel par partners, and we're going to find many companies here that uh, develop devices and controllers, uh, anything from Beckoff, Omron, uh, and many other companies in the market, and we support them all, ICPDAS, Advantech. Uh, so th that, that's one of the main advantages of Indosoft. You can create a solution, a software solution for a particular hardware, but uh, if for any reason you want to link the solution to a different PLC, to a different hardware, you do not have to redesign the application. Uh, in the worst case scenario, you just have to uh, configure the addresses for the new device, but the whole graphical interface, tags database interface to the, uh, to the history data, web thing clients, they are independent from the specific controller you use and we support literally hundreds, uh, if not thousands, of controllers available in the market. Uh, another question, uh, what is the recommended PLC? It really depends on, on your needs. Uh, I would say that our partners provide very uh, interesting options. Uh, Omron is uh, a brand I would recommend. Beckoff is a brand I would recommend. Uh, John, uh, maybe a best way to answer that is just to share which PLC you used in, in your system uh, and why. I selected the Modicon Momentum. That's a, that's a Schneider electric product. Uh, their PLC line is Modicon. Uh, it's one of the oldest manufacturers of PLCs, and uh, I, my evaluation was price per point and uh, for, for a capable controller. Um, so the Modicon Momentum uh, price per I.O. point is lower than most PLCs. And I also mentioned earlier in the presentation that the form factor uh, of the Modicon Momentum PLC lends itself well for residential application because Typically, you're installing uh, within a 2x4, 2x4 inch wall uh, between uh, the 16 inch center studs. And so you, you install a box uh, between those studs. And uh, the modicum momentum is low profile, so it doesn't, it's not too deep to fit within that, uh, that space uh, for home automation. And, and another thing is the modicum momentum uh, it has onboard terminals for power distribution. A lot of PLCs require wiring from the I.O. card down to interface terminals and then to your field devices. The modicum momentum includes uh, those terminals right on the, the, the PLC.
DLC itself. So that's, that's why I selected that solution. Excellent. Thank you, John. Have some other questions here. Uh, how did you communicate with the HVAC system for set points and temperature monitoring? So I think it's more a question for, for you, uh, John. Sure. Uh, each of the temperature sensors uh, within the house uh, are a wall mount sensor that provides a 4 to 20 milliamp analog signal. So those temperature sensors wired into a PLC analog input card, uh, and then they were scaled to the appropriate range within the software. And for the for the other HV, HVAC devices, uh, like, like the radiant heat system, the zone valves are a discrete output, and they, they run on 24 volts DC. Uh, the circulation point or pumps uh, are controlled by a, with a discrete output card by a relay. Uh, there are 120 volt AC pumps. So uh, all these all these devices for the HVAC system uh, wired in. CIO cards. Some of them require an uh, interface device like a relay uh, for compatibility, multiple voltages. Uh, but that's how that's how it all, it all, it all connects. Very good. Thank you, John. Uh, another question is uh, asking for drivers for EIB, QNX, or Z Wave. We have deployed projects within the Softab Studio using those protocols. Uh, for instance, for Z-Wave, uh, I've seen projects where uh, customers use uh, Z-Wave adapters uh, that convert the information to Modbus because Z-Wave is also a proprietary physical uh, layer. So you need a Z-Wave uh, adapter interface communicator uh, in order to link a regular PC to the Z-Wave uh, network. And there are adapters in the market that uh, allows us to communicate with this adapter using the standard Modbus protocol and then convert those commands to the Z-Wave network. And uh, for the EIB and QNX, we have communicated through external OPC servers linked to the standard OPC clients from Windows Software Studio. Another question, and I think it's more for you, John. Uh, how did you control the forced air for AC to different zones? Um, I failed to point that out on one of the screens. You may have noticed uh, that I have the dampers installed in the system. So I have air valves, essentially, uh, that, are, that are controlled from the discrete output card to, to open and close those dampers as appropriate for so the answer is dampers. Okay. Uh, one that's a little bit more personal, John, but I'm going to ask anyway. Have you done any study or do you know how much value has been increased uh, in your home after implementing the automation system? Um, I've been told by residential real estate appraisers that a, a well-integrated smart home of course, that's a, that's on a continuum. So, but but generally adds between twenty and thirty thousand dollars to to a, to at least a home uh, that's in uh, the size of, of, of my home. Uh, and, and the cost of hardware and software for that is a, a fraction of this value, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Um, of course, it, I'm a little bit skewed because I have some connections within the industry to get hardware. And software, but um, if I were to put, I knew this question was going to be asked, so I thought about it a little bit, and I would say that uh, my automation system uh, complete was about twelve thousand uh dollars. -huh. So I still have a huge ROI, not to mention the benefits of using the the system. Yeah. Okay, well, so let's see a few more questions here. Uh, isn't it very difficult running all the wiring in an existing home, especially window and door sensors? 
so again, John, I think it's a, a good question for you. And I, I would add here, so what is the best practice? What did you find more suitable uh, to make the physical installation of the sensors in your home? And uh, it looks like we have addressed uh, all the questions. So uh, here you can find some information to reach Indosoft. You can find all the information at indosoft.com, www.indosoft.com. And I would like to thank uh, everybody for attending the webinar. We do appreciate your, you taking the time to participate and ask questions. Uh, this presentation will be posted at the Indosoft website in the next few days, so you can watch it again at, at your convenience from your web browser. And finally, I'd like to thank you, John. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. We do really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again uh, in the next Indosoft webinars. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.